when it comes to uh, editing and uh, proof writing. Uh, Integrity is also a, uh, a service that um, it covers the similitude from the, the documents and of course our uh, uh, our uh, academic uh, journal which is called research and education basically you can submit uh, articles to uh, to our journal and we can uh, we can publish um, i'm not going to go in um, in a lot of details that is uh, a little bit uh, uh, the time is a little bit small so i will highlight uh, some of the, the services uh, I'm I'm sure that many of you already are using the uh, institution profile. It's our main service that we provide access to the academic databases, where where you can uh, basically access uh, you know maybe Web of Science, Scopus. I'm I'm sure that you you already know about those. Uh, the research and education, as I said, it's uh, it's our journal that we. Uh, we help to publish in uh, open access. The publication is free. Um, I'm not going to go into details because on the last slide, you'll have a small QR code and you'll see everything on uh, on detail. Um, currently, uh, we have more than 25 years of experience when it comes to uh, to publishing. Uh, some, of, uh, some of the um, publishers that we are working with are... Uh, um, Elsevier, Nature, COL, and uh, the Greater. Uh, we can provide uh, help when it comes to to publishing guidance and and so on. Um, some uh, some of the the specific things when it comes to academic publishing, as I said, we can help you to uh, to publish with Springer and uh, and COL. Um, here is a, a an agenda when it comes to uh, uh, when it comes to publishing. It's going to take a lot of time, but working with us, it's going to be a little bit uh, a little bit slow, uh, small. Sorry. Um, here you have some of the examples that we help the Romanian researchers to to publish with uh, COL and uh, Springer. Um, we have the, the the pleasure to announce that we create a, a master class which uh, includes five modules where uh, students researchers um, it doesn't matter if you are on the master degree or on the uh, phd we uh, created five modules and each and every one it's uh, uh, very detailed when it comes to information um, the um, the participants must be between ten to fifteen because we we want to to have as many dialogue as possible and an estimate time will be five to five hours thirty to six hours. It all depends how the the day it's going to unfold. Um, the integrity, um, as I said, it's um, service services that we um. We made it in collaboration with Turnitin, which is a world leader when it comes to uh, documents verification. Basically, you can see um, a very detailed, I think I have an option. Yeah, basically, you can see a very detailed uh, uh, anti-plagiarism document. You have to upload it on, uh, on, our, uh, on our platform, and on the right side, you'll see uh, the details um, even um, even if it's online or, or offline data you'll be able to uh, to verify the uh, the information um, as i said before we also have a platform in collaboration with uh, enago which is a world leader when it comes to uh, professional editing basically it's a very complex platform where you can send uh, uh, documents and they can provide you uh, structural analysis um, and also the the translation which is uh, the academic translation not the the normal one the english uh, 
basically it's a big difference between the academic english and the normal english and as a, as a researcher you have to, to pay attention very very much at uh, at this uh, at this aspect uh, for the enago platform you'll be able to choose between uh, uh, three options which is uh, scientific top impact copy editing or uh, substantial editing you'll see that each and every one of those services it's going to provide uh, a specific uh, a specific thing if, if, even if you need structure you need translation and, and so on you can choose one of those three uh three options um i keep it uh, it short because there is so so less time and um uh, for the ones that you you want you can take up your phone scan the the qr code and it's going to be a small brochure and you'll see all the information that i uh I uh, I'd show you before in a very very detailed uh, option. Thank you very much, and uh, have a good evening. Okay, thank you. Any question? No. So uh, we invite for the second special presentation, uh, Mr. Florin Wanja. Okay. Uh, it was a it was a long day and a, a hard day. Ten minutes, fifty minutes related to uh, our uh, results related to the circular bio uh, economy. It's uh, are just some of our uh, colleagues which work it in uh, this project. I will. Uh, uh, I will start. Sorry, that is in Romanian because uh, uh, I just put it after the speech of our uh, uh, secretary, uh, state secretary. He mentioned about uh, the difference between the circular economy and the economy, which is circular bioeconomy, practically. He mentions that it's a confusion. What is the political secrets? Right now, we are making a, a, a big consortium, to be consortium for the circular bioeconomy, and uh, we are competing. We are leading one of these. And uh, we are competing with uh, for the big university, including for Polytechnic and National University. Polytechnic of Bucharest. We are competing because the consortium, which will have the biggest university of Romania, will have the biggest chance to win in this field. So this was a story because the other one, it's a consortium which is related to the plastic recycling. Uh, it's obvious that plastic recycling is not bioeconomy, it's not circular bioeconomy, even that it's bioplastic. Yeah. Okay. Uh, especially uh, uh, in this condition, because from the beginning of this year, uh, uh, the commission established, decided that polyhydroxyalkanoate what? Are not plastic. Are not biomaterials. Are not biodegradables. <laughs> okay. It's a strange. It's a political reason. It's clear that are uh, uh, biomaterials, but was a political decision in order to avoid microplastic because polyhydroxyalkanoat involve processing with a lot of additives which are generated by microplastic pollution. Okay, so 
we focus it first of all on biorefinery of the side stream. Uh, side stream, co-product practically, are a general problem on the whole bioeconomy if we're discussing about agriculture, if we're discussing about food industry, if we are discussing about pulp, pulp of paper, because, for example, lignin or lignosulfonate, it's a byproduct, a co-product of the pulp on paper. Or even that we are discussing about other type of industry, like essential oil industry. 97% of the best of producing lavender, it's wasted. It's just a waste. You are extracting the essential oil, and you have a huge waste. Or, for example, it's more and more popular, uh, uh, the sea bacter is more and more popular, a berry, which is more and more popular because it's very healthy. As the harvesting involved to cut branches. So we'll have a lot of branches, a lot of leaves, just to get some berries. Okay, so we have, it's obvious that in this system we have a lot of side stream, which is quite valid, and we try to explore it. And we develop it several approaches in a frame of several projects. Here it's mentioned that was an uh, RAB project, an ERANET. Uh, and in this kind of the project, we developed it a consortium based on, based on kombucha, so on SCOBY, symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast. And was quite interesting because this one produced uh, silicase or a type of enzyme, enzymes that have silicase activity and could be used in order to recover silicon because this was the main topic. But in the meantime, we observed it that uh, Biofilm, the pellicle, which is formed by kombucha, it's a very good source for nanocellulose. And you produce it nanocellulose from this kind of the pellicle based on computer. And this is also another approach in order to obtain nanocellulose, bacterial nanocellulose, which is more puffy. It's more uh, because, you know, here on kombucha, uh, in a pellicle, you need to accommodate also yeast, which are 10 times larger than bacteria. So the uh, uh, nanocellulose pellicle, it's much fluffy. It's much, have a, a higher uh, uh, swelling capacity. And it's quite interesting for various applications. And we then we develop it different type of formulation for biomedical application or for agricultural application based on this kind of the, uh, nanocellulose, which could be produced also by fermentation of the uh, biomass hydroxyrolide. One application is to increase the avail availability of the pollen. It's a very popular, uh, the bee collecting pollen, it's a very uh, popular as a healthy food. Pollen it's made by exin. Exin is one of the example of the biopolymer, which is not biodegradable. Yeah. Okay. You could, for example, you could identify um, uh, different things, different in archaeology. You could identify by pollen, by pollen form, because the exin keep the uh, pollen. They were able to trace back the travel of the Iceman, starting from Italy and arriving arriving to the uh, Germany. They were able to trace it by analyzing the pollen from his clothes. So the pollen is not biodegradable. So what we are eating? Okay, the animal which are eating pollen are cracking the uh, exin and the content of the pollen is released. So what we are eating pollen? So the conclusion was to use this consortium of kombucha producing silicase activity 
in order to crack the pollen and to release its content on outside. So to increase the bioavailability of this product. And Bogdan is not your pictures, but look, it's not your image, but look at the value of the electron microscope. It show you that something happened. It show how you need also to build up to keep, to take the moment. Uh, another uh, project was uh, a Facet Surplus project where we use trichoderma in order to, uh, in the first bioeconomic bioreferendary stage. And uh, this trichoderma, you use it for the treatment of the passiflora. Uh, trichoderma is also a biostimulant, uh, my, my organism. And the biostimulant, the biostimulant are uh, similar to the dietary supplement, are modifying the physiology of the plant. And it's increasing the ability of a plant to cope with, to adapt to the stress. In this situation, we observe it, a proliferation of the chloroplast on passiflora after treatment with trichoderma. What's, what's the issue? The uh, uh, passiflora, it's a shadow plant because it's on tree in shadow. And usually it is grown when was accommodated, it is grown in open field. And especially after the climatic change, the intensity of the light, the light increase very much. You have, for example, at the moon, something like, okay, it's not an, uh, this is a, this is a unit that are using Einstein. It's just a unit that are using in uh, plant uh, photosynthesis, not Joule, Einstein. Okay, it's doubling and it's something which is strange because you don't have a, a mole of photos. Okay, the photos are also, are also particles, but anyhow, you don't have a mole of photons. And Einstein is the energy of a mole of photons. <laughs> it doesn't matter, this is typical for the... So the intensity that you have, is something like uh, in normal condition, we used to have something like uh, 1,200, 1,200, uh, 1,200 uh, micro Einstein per uh, uh, second per square meter. Right now we have 1,500. Just because of the climatic change in this area, which are 45, 40, 44, 45 Celsius. Another, uh, so this. So it's a high intensity, and this type of the uh, uh, biostimulant help plant to adapt to the stress. We develop it all uh, in uh, this one, uh, an incomera, Aranet, and we develop it a uh, new type of uh, strigolactone. Strigolactone are uh, complex molecule produced by plants, which are used both as internal and uh, endo and exo signals and uh, we have also on uh, Aranet project with uh, uh, UNITO with Torino University related to strigolactron and to use strigolactron in microalgae and we develop it in different type of the uh, system which are carbon negative system because Microalgae are fixing the CO2. And uh, this is a project, an European project which was led by Sapienza <laughs> and uh, was supported by uh, a uh, Slovak company uh, as an end user because it's an UBBI. So it's this kind of the project from the joint undertaking unit. And we here we work with nanoformulation of the 
uh, polyphenols uh, extracted from rapeseed. And Viral is a producer of biodiesel and has one of their byproducts is a rapeseed meal. And uh, the idea was to extract polyphenols and then to extract the protein because the uh, rapeseed proteins are uh, uh, high quality proteins and could be a very good replacer of the insect protein. Okay, because you need alternative proteins. So what is best? What is the uh, uh, best? Anyhow, I am saying I am saying to the people each time that eating bread, especially after that, uh, renouncing to the uh, vomit uh, for the treatment of the silo, means that you are eating also a lot of tribolium due to the infestation. So eating bread means that you eat. It's been it's made with grain, which were infested. Uh, that is, but you know, you are not realizing that it's also some insect protein in the bread. But and usually it's quite difficult to accept uh, uh, that. But it's a good, very good uh, source of protein, the rapeseed protein. But you have the polyphenol, which we, you need to get off, which are also very interesting for a uh, different type of. Uh, formation for the well-being industry, for example. The ferulic acid, you know, very good for the for wrinkles. You become younger. And uh, the idea is to nanoformulate with the chitosan in order to uh, uh, improve the solubility and uh, enhance the uh, uh, biological activity. So, and this is a project by activation by the ascorbic acid. We obtained it and we demonstrated that was a um, grafting of the perulic acid on chitosan by different types of the method. Here, here it's an XRD spectra of the chitosan. And in electron microscopy and uh, electronic microscopy. Um, one of our partners made, made also the LCA study in order to upscale. Uh, we discussed it also about the improving of the quality. And here Naomi work a lot of on that, improving the quality of the protein by uh, forming plastin. Because it's a very good, the rapeseed protein is very good in terms of composition of the amino acid. But as all the plant protein is bitter, the bitterness is it's a result of the hydrophobic amino acid. Plus the information which involved to form a, a nano a particle of peptides mean to form this kind of agglomeration where due to the this kind of the amphiphilic and uh, stabilization you will have the hydrophobic amino acid inside of the uh, uh, michela let's say inside of the agglomeration of the uh, uh, peptide and uh, we have another project this is uh, and Norway grant. Norway is giving, ah, also in Poland. It's, um, uh, it's in Poland, uh, Romania, Poland, uh, uh, Czech Republic, uh, Portugal, uh, Bulgaria, where are, uh, they are having this kind of the grants. Two types, Norway grants and, uh, okay, together with Liechtenstein and this Iceland, others. <laughs> To big countries, which are which are in the Schengen space and are not in the European Union, and uh, in order to cooperate, they are uh, uh, giving this kind of uh, grants. And we have a Norway grants, which was related to the use of the plant biostimulant, which is one of our um, 
one of the product which we, we generate from biorefinery. We use it in order to uh, cope, to reduce the uh, drawbacks, the drawbacks and negative effects of the uh, conservation agriculture with high crazy I mean that you are keeping each are keeping all the year the land covered with crops, winter covered crops, which have some advantages, but have also negative impact. And we develop it, we select it multifunctional the trihoderma strain. Our partner from uh, Petropony together with us develop it glycodynamic chitosan. This was a uh, group led by uh, Malen, which developed the dy dynamic theory and get a Nobel Prize. And this is a group that worked with uh, Len and developed this kind of uh, hydrogen with dynamic, uh, biodynamic, uh, containing biodynamic, which is quite dynamic and uh, allow a very nice uh, formulation, similar to this formulation of the of different uh, compounds. We develop it also because of stragolactone we want to uh, formulate inside of this and you develop it uh, fluorescent formulation also to look to the receptors of the for this compound in the in various microorganisms from rhizosphere. It's a degradable formulation that was characterized. We identified different microbial strain which produce nano selenium, which is also another type of the biostimulant. The, we discovered that the strigolactron which we made the fluorescent strigolactron have also very interesting solvatophonic effect, which is quite interesting, for example, to determine various characteristic of mixtures or of deep eutectic solvent, which are quite used in the biorefinery. This is a deep, uh, deep characterization by NMR done in Petropony. We done with the Norway partners and uh, with our, one of our colleagues, we done uh, uh, the first uh, study of the ecotoxicity evaluation of the strigolactone. It's a big problem in order to make uh, a toxicity study on strigolactone. are producing in a tiny amount and are costing one milligrams of one of uh, analogs. It's something like of the most affordable, something like 100, 150 million euro. In order to do, so we have this one, which is quite affordable. Once again, price, we're coming back to the question of the price, is quite affordable. It's $1,000 one gram. So it's, it's not so, it's, it's not so cheap, but comparing to $100 one milligrams, it's okay. You could do the, uh, and we observe, and this is interesting, this is a drawn picture of the field experiment. And this is a bare soil, so the normal condition. And this is a mulch, mulch it. So it's covered with this kind of the residue of vegetable residue. And I think that it's all the other difference. Uh, it enhances plant to stress. We were happy last year, happy for us, because last year was one of the worst drought ever in Romania. So this kind of the system worked very well during droughts. So we have a perfect field experiment with atmospheric growth. So which allow us to put, uh, to demonstrate the effect. We have an increased yield. Uh, right now, this is the beginning 
we are working to develop metabolomic with NEMEA. Metabolomic with, uh, together with Petroponi, which have a quite nice equipment for that. And uh, also because it's quite interesting, this is a glomalin, which is related to the carbon deposition to soil, which is a sustainable carbon deposition to soil. And uh, uh, the polyamine and sphigolacton are uh, promoting the stimulation of the mycorrhizal symbiosis. Uh, because what is going on, and this is a, a thing that I intend to say, it's a closure. This is a way to close the uh, to to have a sequestration, a uh, sustainable sequestration of the carbon into soil, because in normal condition, uh, the organic carbon that you are providing to the soil is promoting the emission if it's degradable. If it's easy degradable, you will promote the production of the nitric oxide. Because this will involve the nitrification of the uh, 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 nitrogen from soil. And nitrification process is associated with production of the nitric oxide. Nitros sorry, nitric oxide and nitrosous oxide. Uh, so, in this condition, you are fixing CO2 and you are releasing a gas which is 300 times more efficient, let's say like this, in as greenhouse gases. And these are our results which demonstrate that we know what it's circular bioeconomy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for presenting the results of our institute and uh, particularly of uh, your group in this area. If we have uh, some uh, very small, uh, very tiny questions. That's a question and if, okay, maybe we could have a, a other discussion. I find the, con I teach eight years at the industrial design and I find the concept of cradle to cradle, cradle to cradle by using by design. Do you use as complementary? Could you? Think have could have was, cooperation. Was uh, uh, the LCA was from cradle to grave? Ah, no, it's cradle to cradle to transform the product. Uh, no, the, the LCA, which is done according to the standard, it's a cradle to grave. If you want to discuss about uh, cradle to cradle, it's already circular economy. Yeah because we are discussing about man-made products, yeah? Not because in the case of uh, circular bioeconomy, the closing the loop is on uh, uh, production, vegetable production, plant production. You are closing the loop there. Thank you very much. Yeah? Thank yeah. you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, with this, we conclude also the special presentation sections. And I will give the microphone to our colleagues, uh, Cristina Nascuz and Ana Maria Gurban, to uh, open the oral uh, presentations. I suppose we can pass uh, faster a little bit because uh, we still have, yes, Grigore, <laughs> sorry. We don't have a break now because it's too late. I suppose everyone wants to continue in order to finish. So we invite Grigore Shenovsky from Ichekim to present the biogas production using gas and Avor.
Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today I will present biogas production using, using gas endeavor automatic gas flow system. So in our days, we have major problems such as pollution, different wastes, uh, greenhouse gases, but we have enormous encourage from different laws, green packages, uh, approved uh, uh, reduction in the greenhouse gas emissions and promotion by different funds and uh, just encouraged to make more green environment. So what does it mean? How we can resolve this pollution problem and wastes? It's simple. We just collect different uh, plant uh, wastes, animal wastes, from farms, big industries. Everything is mixed into digesters, big digesters, uh, gaining some fertilizers that it's okay for soil. But the most important, gaining uh, energy for cars, heat for, the, uh, heat for the houses, energy, and everything from the wastes. So the next one, I'll talk about how it's working, the biologic process of the methanogenic, of, 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 the, of the gas production. In the simple words, I'll say uh, there are some complex compounds, carbohydrates, proteins, fats, that are hard to, gen de to, um, to assimilate. These complex compounds are, let's say, destroyed in something more simple, like sugars, amino acids, fatty acids. And this way, it's easier to ferment, digest, and to obtain the biomethan. Simple as that. So, what are the factors affecting the anaerobic process? You can see in this slide, every factor affecting anaerobic process. After the red arrow, you can see the optimum, optimal numbers to have a really good process, anaerobic process. The next one is our experience regarding biogas process. So everything started from a five liter fermenter. Five liter, something small, something interesting. We just played some recipes, some formulation, different biomass, different inoculum. So obtaining some results, we, our next step was a 40 liter digester. Wow, interesting, 40 liters. So obtaining some results, an interesting formulation, it wasn't enough for us. We, gain, we, we came with a bigger idea from 40 liters. Here we come. The 5,000 liters that is at our partner, also from a research partner, uh, again, 5,000 liters. Again, uh, obtaining big results with this installation. But with all experience, all installations, everything is fine, but we encourage some problems. Uh, everything with the flow, with the volume, with the purification of the gas, with the temperature control, it was kind of, we was kind of restricted to analyze everything. Okay, we tried to making some simple tricks by dislocating the water, by uh, the total volume was by a theoretical formulation, but also temperature control was just covered in the fiber gas with the foil, okay? But the modern problems require modern solution. Here we come, the gas endeavor. But before we continue, I would like to thank the, our research institute, Ichikim, for providing this magnific installation and uh, for funding our experiments. So here the real-time uh, installation. So how it works? 
before uh, the biomass is mixed, is fed to the reactor. Um, after obtaining the biogas is uh, through the tube into the carbon dioxide absorption unit. The, biog the biogas is up the nit natural OH absorbing the CO2. The purified biogas is, again, the biomethane is going in the flow cell array. How it works? The gas is going to this flow array. Uh, it's having like a um, palette that is going up and down. And this palette uh, is giving like a signal that is uh, going into the server. And this server, the results are um, written on the server. And we just can um, see the results on the computer. By the experimental part uh, was uh, also uh, experimental part was made for uh, next grant the grant internal grant of the HEKIM that is for young researchers. So the volume of the reactor have uh, sixty milliliters, but useful reactor volume is only forty. So just remember that we used different let's say recipes and formulations. It's like cooking. Let's take a bit of sugar, a bit of salt, flour, and this is it. And also, it's here also the same. We take a bit of everything of the plants, of the animal waste, of the uh, dry microalgae, but everything is uh, mixed with the liquid digester. What does it mean? It's a liquid, or let's say, uh, digestion from the previous uh, experiments to have the Mm, bacterial colony to make the uh, reaction work. So after the making uh, the biomass, we worked on the conditions of 37 temperature. It's uh, optimal for uh, this uh, process. Also the steering speed and the process duration was 27 days. As a result, uh, on the Symbol number five, the red line, this is the composition that we worked on the past, is the best results we obtained in the past uh, installation. We just tried on this new one. So results are the same, at the highest amount of the biomethane. But uh, here it comes the flow. And in the flow one, it's interesting. On the sample two and four, it's like exploded. The first two days, it gave the highest amount of uh, biomethane. It started well, but ended too fast, only two days. But on the sample five that I mentioned before, uh, it was something like uh, a, a, a good res result. After seven days, the process entered in the four, fourth stage of methanogenic process, obtained the biggest amount of the flow of debit, let's say, uh, of biogas, and just as see, it's, it was a continual flow of the biogas during all the process, during all the 27 days. Two and four, I explained, and five. So, after the 27 days, the biomass was filtered, separated into solid and liquid uh, fractions. So the solid and liquid fractions was uh, given to the analysis department. They made the analysis. You can see the methods that we used to, uh, to analyze the NPK, nutrient content, or macro elements of the uh, fractions. And I asked the colleagues, it's OK to use in the soil? It's, it's in the optimum parameters to use? The answer was yes. It's OK for them. It was yes to use in, in the soil. So conclusions. First of all, that we was made this experiment was to analyze uh, first of all was the to analyze the 
equipment and we resolve the problem with the wastes, animal and plant wastes, and also the environmental problem and energy crisis simultaneously. But uh, not only trying the new equipment, but also we optimize the methanogenic process using the new equipment. And as you can see, the, the technology is evolving. Maybe in one day, we just can collect the waste from the trash bin and use directly to, uh, to obtain the fuel and maybe travel through space and time. But also, centrifugation of biomass obtains solid and liquid fractions. Why? So solid phase is okay to dry and use in the soil and also composting uh, to obtain fertilizers, but the liquid is interesting one. The liquid we use to obtain cryogels. It's something like a controlled, uh, slow um, fertilizers that uh, uh, give the macro elements in the soil. And our future, future perspectives. So first of all, our dissemination of the results. First step was this conference. Uh, the next one are parted patent applications, scientific journals, but also we still continue to optimize, optimize, optimize the methanogenic process, but adding biocatalase. And also after all of this, our, our new relationship with the universities, private sectors, uh, research, research institutions. So thank you. Thank you very much for your attention. Vigore, I want to congratulate you for the unique way to present your work. It's very important and very nice and really congratulations. <laughs> no, don't worry, it's very, very interesting. Uh, I would like to ask you if you have question for Grigore. You put soul in what you present, in what you work, so congratulate. Okay. <laughs> So pay attention when we are discussing about fertilizer and that stuff like this. Please pay attention to the condition of application. Because you cannot say that you have a fertilizer from the liquid digester. The liquid fertilizer you could apply it only to the winter. And biogas you are producing the whole year. What we are doing with the liquid digester? With the liquid digester. We are giving uh, the liquid phase, we're giving to our colleagues form of the polymers, and this liquid are like um, made in the cryogels. And as I said, the cryogels are like giving slow, 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 slow this liquid into the soil. It's a diff. No, not apply. Only with the winter you could apply. Because you cannot apply liquid on the cold. Yeah, okay. Uh, it's, so it's a question which was long for a long, long time. Okay, thank you. I'll assume that. Okay, thank you, Grigore. Very nice presentation. A lot of work. So now we invite our colleagues, uh, colleague uh, Bogdan Trica, to present present us the next one and the last one. Hello. Yes. I, uh, uh.
Okay, so it seems we have a small technical issue, but uh, until uh, Bogdan will uh, return, if our uh, colleagues are online for the post uh, online poster presentation, we have only a few poster presentations. It's uh, Vasile Guțanu, Oleg Petuhov, Alina Mirela Ipate, Gabriel Alisa and Maria Botnaru. Are you online? It seems like they are not online. Uh, the next one would be uh, Irina Georgiana Muntanu and Constantina Petrei. So Irina Georgiana Muntanu and Constantina Petrei, if they are online. Uh, the next one is uh, Sorin Claudiu Linic, Gabriel Baisan, Alin Stoica, Radu Manarca. If uh, Dr. Linic is online. It seems like we are not very lucky with uh, the online poster presentation. It, yeah, we uh, kind of uh, passed the, the hour. Um, Vasilika Vasile, Irina Popa, Christian Petku, Alina Dima, and uh, Mihaela Ion, if any yes, author yes. is online. Yes, yes, I am online. Alina Dima. It looks like... I don't know. <laughs> yes, I am online. Yes. Well, share screen or? Uh, yes, yes, just a minute. Just a sign that you are online. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, if you could please. Uh, Present your poster in three or four minutes. Yes, yes, yep. I will be quick. Uh, good evening. My name is Alina Dima, and I represent the National Institute for Building Research. The poster presents the results obtained from the study of VOC emissions generated by materials developed in the concept of valorizing agro-industrial and shippable waste for designing of a new finishing product. Four types of uh, finishing materials based on different uh, waste ratio were developed in the present study. These material have been studied from the perspective of VOC emission using an emission test chamber with a volume of 29 cubic meters developed, uh, developed in the project and currently located on the Institute's research platform. The emission test chambers uh, allows the, the control of air exchanges with the external environment to control the ventilation of the interior space with the possibility of creating ventilation scenarios. The measurement of VOC emission in PPB was uh, performed uh, in the closed system only with an air recirculation using the direct detection method and the portable data logging detector probe. The operating principle is based on uh, electronic detection having a photoionization detector. The sampling interval of uh, the sampling interval for the VOC concentration was one minute, and the total record during the period was uh, 24 hours. The lowest value of VOC um, was uh, from uh, V3 material, 724 ppb, and the highest value was from V2 product, uh, over a thousand ppb. Considering the importance of a healthy indoor environment in which to spend our life daily. Uh, when designing finishing products for indoor use, uh, it is necessary to evaluate them also from the perspective of pollutant emissions in such a way as to have the lowest impact on our health. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your uh, presentation. There are some questions in the room from online. If not, I will ask Mrs. Irina Popa if she is online. Uh, yes, I'm uh, I'm online, but I will present uh, the poster from my colleague Alina Dima because I have a problem over the camera. Okay. Just a second. Is it okay? Yes. Okay. 
good evening. Uh, my name is Irina Popa. I'm senior researcher at uh, Notre Dame Urban Michel, and I will present you the poster Durability of Multifunctional Proteins Made with Additions of Animal Waste and Other Industrial Byproducts. Our research uh, had a triple purpose. First, we wanted to obtain. Just one moment. You could uh, put share screen to see the poster. Oh. It's not necessary yeah. the camera. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, it's okay? Yes. Okay. So uh, our research had a triple purpose. Uh, first, it was to obtain innovative coating, coatings by uh, capitalizing agro-industrial agro uh, byproducts. In this case, uh, sunflower seed uh, husk and animal waste, in this case, low quality uh, sheep wool, uh, together with uh, other materials, uh, particularly an acrylic binder, uh, expanded pervert granules, and uh, polyvinylic acetate adhesive. Uh, the second aim was to uh, characterize the coating uh, from the point of view of their uh, thermal uh, insulating potential. And the third, um, purpose was to determine the durability of the innovative coatings by exposing them uh, to uh, for 30 days to the action of an aggressive environment characterized by a uh, large uh, temperature va uh, variation from uh, minus 20 degrees uh, to plus 23 degrees. Uh, so we, we created uh, three innovative coatings, F1, F2, F3, uh, three, sorry. Um, each of them was made of a different biocomposite material. Uh, here I have a detail. Uh, each coating uh, is a three layered coating. Uh, the final uh, layer being from one single composite, but uh, the middle uh, layer uh, making the difference in their behavior. Uh, the durability of these uh, coatings was studied by analyzing the evolution of thermal conductivity before and after uh, uh, the exposure period. You have the graphic from the left uh, side. And uh, again, uh, and also the evolution of the adhesion to the support of the coating um, uh, at uh, several uh, terms, at seven days and 28 days after application. And uh, after two weeks and four weeks after exposure, uh, during exposure. And we have here the uh, graphic from the right side. The conclusions um, were um, that were out, uh, the conclusions that were outlined by the experimental results were the following. Each of the three uh, coatings uh, had uh, characteristics of thermal protection materials considering uh, the threshold value uh, of uh, 100 milliwatts uh, per meter and uh, Kelvin. Um, the best value uh, was for uh, coating F2, if you will see uh, in the in left, in the left graphic, uh, it was the, the, the lowest thermal conductivity uh, at the beginning and even at the end of the exposure. Uh, the adhesions to cement mortar uh, increased from the beginning till uh, the end of the exposure, as it can be seen in the right uh, graphics. This is a good point for uh, a coating that uh, tends to be a uh, finishing uh, coating. So the experimental results indicated that thermal conductivity and adherence to the support can be uh, two um, um, parameters that um, are um, indicators for the durability of such kind of coatings uh, to uh, this uh, environment, aggressive environment. Uh, we can say that uh, uh, these uh, coatings can be uh, used as a finishing, but also a finishing with uh, thermal uh, isolating properties. 
and also with a good durability to such a kind of aggression. Um, we, I have to, being a, to a symposium, chemical symposium, I have to uh, outline the facts that these structures of these uh, coatings are specific, uh, that they uh, are resulted mainly from the interaction between lignum, lignin, cellulose, uh, and keratin proteic fibers. That's why they are specific uh, sustainable materials that um, this, uh, that must be um, further studied in order to uh, know them better and to see uh, their whole potential to be used in construction. Uh, thank you for your attention. We thank you for staying with us until this hour. Okay. If there are some questions from online or not. Mrs. Andrea Yosajano. Yes, but I'm not sure if it's in online or not. Ah, is okay. <laughs> so, we'll proceed with the presentation from the stick to finish with the posters and uh, student at the University of Bucharest in the field of biology and I also work as a researcher at National Institute of Research and Development of Biological Sciences in Bucharest. The study that I will present to you today form a crucial part of my PhD thesis. The focus revolves around the investigation of the anti-inflammatory and antioxidant activity of aloe vera extract in immortalized human keratinocytes. As you may already know, aloe vera has been used since ancient times for its medical properties and it continues to captivate the researchers today. For this study, I investigated the specific effect of aloe vera extract on keratinocytes, which represent the major type cell of the epidermis. Initially, we conducted a series of tests that characterized the aqueous extract of aloe vera, namely the determination of total phenolic content, protein content, and ascorbic acid content. Then we performed in vitro cytocompatibility on our extract with keratinocytes, followed by anti-inflammatory and antioxidant tests that were also conducted in vitro. The results show us that our extract present an average phenolic protein and ascorbic acid content when comparing to results from literature. Regarding the cytocompatibility, aloe vera extract was biocompatible in a wide range of concentrations up to 1 mg per milliliter. At the concentrations of 0.25 and 0.5 mg per milliliter, the extract showed the capacity to inhibit the secretion of interleukin-8 in stressed keratinocytes. Since interleukin-8 is a pro-inflammatory cytokine, the results might suggest that aloe vera extract presents an anti-inflammatory effect in this type of cells. Moreover, at the same concentrations, the extract inhibited the production of inter intracellular reactive oxygen species. In conclusion, the findings of this study provided further evidence supporting the antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties associated with aloe vera in skin cells. Thank you for your attention. Yeah. Oh. Hello, everyone. My name is Andrea uh, Yusagiano, and I'm happy to have the opportunity to presentation. We would uh, like to call again the first uh, four ones. Uh, Vasile Guțanu, Oleg Petuhov, Alina Mirela Ipate, Gabriel Lisa, Maria Botnaru, if they are online. Irina Georgiana Munteanu from uh, Dunaia de Jos. Sorin Claudiu Linici, Gabriel Băisan, Alin Stoica, Radu Mănarcă. And uh, Vasilica Vasile, Irina Popa, Cristian Petcu, Alina Dima and Mihaela Ion. Ah, asta prezentat? Ok. So only three post online posters we have. So uh, with uh, this we close the, the online poster presentations. We will call them again tomorrow. Uh,
perhaps they will uh, be online. And uh, our uh, last but not least, our colleague Bogdan Trica will uh, present uh, his work, uh, the salting of sodium lignosulfonide from the spent sulfate liquor using a diffusion-based metastable, metastable liquid liquid extraction method. Bogdan, please, uh, you have the floor and keep it in uh, 10, 12 minutes. Hello, sorry for what happened before. Uh, so today we will discuss a product from a very old uh, process that uh, started around 100 years ago. And we'll see if there's any way uh, in the new context that we live in uh, to maybe propose some new way of, uh, of purifying it. Um, I'll promise I'll keep it under one hour. Yes, I don't know. Told me maximum half an hour. Okay. Um, good. Uh, let me go. Okay. So uh, I have uh, around two main parts. So I'll discuss a bit about what I try to do with uh, uh, ultra, uh, microfiltration. I actually cross uh, cross flow uh, tangential membranes. So we'll discuss a bit ab about the chemical engineering aspect of uh, this uh, kind of uh, separation, and then uh, we'll. I'll try to propose something that uh, I haven't really seen this way or another any, anywhere else. And uh, so maybe we'll discuss a bit uh, if you think it's uh, something interesting or not. So this is just the overall uh, process, the sulfide process, which, uh, you know, turns uh, wood chips to cellulose mainly. And as a byproduct, it has a spent sulfide liquor that is high in sodium lignosulfonate and uh, also has uh, plenty of sodium sulfide. And in some situations, it would be interesting to, to keep the organic part and valorize it in uh, different applications and then maybe recover the sodium sulfide to reduce the overall price of the process. So uh, here we have, uh, uh, okay, this is the system we worked on. It's, uh, it uses ceramic membranes. Here is a ceramic membrane. It's just, it's a pre-test kind of uh, uh, method. And uh, in fact, it, uh, just it, it, conceptually, it's ex identical to uh, the membrane uh, system that maybe people are most, most used to see. This one is just a, a cylindrical system. And uh, in fact, the, the, the retentate flows inside the tube, and then with the aid of, uh, you know, uh, like a block blocking valve, uh, you just push it, uh, push the permeate through the membrane. So then that's where you achieve the separation. This it's a system that can achieve very high shear rates and uh, also very high flows through the the membrane, so that uh, you can reduce the maximum the boundary layer that can form at the surface that will impede the separation. Uh, I, won't, I won't stay here anymore. This is just to discuss a bit about the membranes themselves. So uh, overall, uh, they have high, uh, this kind of system has relatively high permeabilities. Uh, and with uh, respect to the lignosulfonate, they can be uh, recovered. The permeability can be recovered quite well uh, if uh, you manage to dry them uh, and then you wash them uh, using the uh, back pressure as well. So this is just uh, an attempt to uh, relate the uh, uh, entrance pressure uh, to the membrane with the, the pump setting and uh, to the flow rate, uh, what we actually measure, and to the permeability that is just the flow rate divided by the surface area of the membrane and the, the pressure, the transmembranary pressure. Uh, so these are just kind of, uh, I'll just go over. The, we also have a back pressure system on this uh, uh, unit. And uh, in fact, it's uh, impossible to separate them in a actual one day. <laughs> without uh, having uh, using this back pressure that works perfectly uh, anywhere below 30 seconds uh, at the 30 second cycle. So overall we have a relatively uh, you know high uh, flow rate, but of course this, here we're just discussing about the pre-filtration. So we're just trying to see if it, uh, the systems can uh, be used to also to pre-filter and then maybe go forward. Now, unfortunately the whole, uh, the lignosulfonate from this uh, source especially, uh, seems to be quite uh, low uh, weight, so then it doesn't separate uh, readily as it would have been uh, really nice on uh, this kind of membranes or with lower pores. So in that case, uh, we're required to do some kind of, uh, you know, precipitation or agglomeration or to favorize this kind of uh, binding of the lignosulfonate and to facilitate, facilitate indirectly this kind of precipitation. And in this situation, uh, I just show you uh, two situations in which the 
lignosulfonate itself on uh, the 0 0.8 uh, microns, for example, is enough to, to reduce the flux uh, very much simply because it, uh, uh, the, the ethanol which we used to precipitate was added during the system. So that's a bad idea, which means, in fact, that the kinetics of the precipitation are similar to the kinetics of the, the flow or the separation. So then you have lignosulfonate on the surface that immediately then precipitates. So it's a bad idea to do it like this. But what we can do is precipitate it before, ensure that the precipitation took uh, uh, went all the way, and then uh, we can precipitate. We can separate it much uh, nicer. Uh, what we've seen here is that, in fact, the initial concentration is also very important when we're precipitating with ethanol, which kind of defeats our purpose purpose a bit. But uh, still, uh, just some uh, values related to what we tried uh, in these two, two kind of uh, situations. Uh, I won't. Uh, I won't say so. It's still ongoing, but uh, there there are some uh, some uh, uh, some ideas that perhaps might work if we uh, can show that in fact it's economical because that's the whole point of all of these attempts to show that in fact you, you achieve an economical separation that ideally is uh, uh, separates the organic from the uh, inorganic uh, well enough. Uh, so then we went to some this kind of metastable extraction of sodium sulfide. So uh, the, the the assumption was that, for example, this this extract has a quite high density. So maybe perhaps if it uh, manages to stay underwater and uh, you you don't mix the whole uh, thing, maybe it will just uh, kind of uh, uh, diffuse into the uh, supernatant that is uh, water based, and then at the end you can just remove it from the. And this in this situation is just a matter if uh, sodium sulfite is faster than uh, lignosulfonate when they diffusing in the supernatant. Of course, the overall process is super slow because in this case we're discussing the fixed second law, which is uh, uh, just saying that uh, you, you need to mix things to make them go faster overall. But this it was a good uh, initial step, so. There you go. Then what we tried here, and uh, I'll have two clips uh, just now. Uh, we tried to, um, you see, to put it on in a, a, you know, a vessel, a smaller vessel inside the bigger vessel. In the bigger vessel, we had a lot of water, and uh, underneath we uh, we stirred it. So we, we in this situation we didn't have a stagnant uh, layer of water over the stagnant layer of uh, uh, spent sulfide liquor. And uh, overall, the, the whole uh, thing went uh, much faster, but still not as fast as it would be required to make it, uh, you know, uh, feasible at the uh, industrial uh, scale. So I'll, I'll just uh, go, sorry, I'll just go quickly to uh, the clip because I think these clips are nice and they're just nice to look at. So, uh, no, I can't believe it. Here I go again. It's really, really upsetting. Sorry, I have some. Uh, sorry, I'll. I, I think it's really important to show you this because it's. Uh, you will immediately get the feeling of uh, what uh, would be a good solution in this case with the lignos sulfonate. So, I'm really sorry for all of these USB. I have one more uh, shot here <laughs> with that one. If not, uh, maybe I should have done it in triplicate. That way. No, I think, I think, uh, yes, I know, but uh, worked on my system. I really want to show you these movies, so nobody's leaving until I show you the movies. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Second, second, the second slide. Yes, I should have it as an MP4. I didn't look, look, look. Okay, okay. The, uh, click on the left one, please. Okay. See, so you just push it underneath, and it just goes down and stays underneath. And as it goes, then the surface area related to the volume uh, is initially quite high, but then it gets higher. And in the left side, you, on the right side, you can see uh, this kind of uh, you know difference of density, but also improved mixing. So then overall, you get uh, so this is just a proof of uh, concept, let's say. And now uh, the, the next uh, way of improving the surface volume ratio, and oh, not here, sorry. I have to go back to the other one. Just a second. I hope it will work this time. Maybe. I can still go. Uh, I can still go. Yep. Oh, sorry, sorry. I promised uh, we're half an hour. Yes. Oh, this one? Ah, yes. Okay. Okay.
last slide. Uh, full screen. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. So in this situation, what we did, and uh, as in as much as uh, possible, you know, like uh, in situ in a situation where we control as much as possible what was what's going on. So we have a tilted uh, cylinder, and then what we do, we have a, a higher volume of water, and then we slowly using the peristaltic pump, we slowly let it slide on the bottom of the surface, you know. And then in this situation, we need to achieve laminar flow. Because if we go above the laminar flow, then we're doing uh, turbulent flow, and then we mix everything, and it's not working. So uh, yes, and so this is this is the other, and it actually at very low uh, flows, it went much better than the the other uh, uh, kind of attempts. And uh, which, of course, there are. I should look at other ways in which I can maximize the interface without getting them mixed. So it's that it's that kind of a challenge. But I think that. If uh, everything is nice, uh, then maybe we can uh, intensify this process enough that it will become actually interesting. And it's very, uh, you know, friendly. You just have to pump it up and then let it slide. Okay. Uh, so some conclusions and uh, acknowledgements. Okay. okay, Bogdan, thank you. Ten minutes. <laughs> you have. Yes. So, if you have any questions or comments, hmm? one short one. Okay. It seems to have a, as example, your boss presented also very relaxed as you presented. And what I like to emphasize, congratulations, also the price. Very important because. Yeah, I told you, I told you, I have long discussions in a real life. Companies, uh, the research for real life applications are two questions. So, what and show me the money? Show me the money could change completely the concept. Congratulations. Keep on working. Oh, okay. Great. It's okay. Another one? No? So, this was the last uh, presentation. So, <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you very much. So, okay. Thank you, Christina. Uh, before uh, telling you uh, goodbye and uh, to see you tomorrow, I have a small announcement. All the our colleagues that had the posters present posters uh, presentation today for section one in the ground floor uh, were uh, in this time were judged by our uh, scientific committee. So tonight they will receive uh, uh, some of them. We receive uh, the information that they will have to prepare the three or four minutes presentation for Friday morning. Thank you very much and uh, goodbye. Okay, so we'll see you tomorrow at uh, 10 o'clock in the morning uh, with uh, further plenary sessions and uh, section presentations. Thank you very much.